Okay, here we go. So I hope now that uh, that you can uh, you found this broadcast, and do please say say hi, and say that you can hear me. Um, right, you're starting to join now. I can see that, Ellie. That's great. Thank you. Heaven knows what happened there. Uh, we're back. Hooray. Hi. Hi again. There we go. So, and I assume you can hear me okay too. If you can't hear me, for heaven's sake, say, uh, that's great. Everybody's piling in. That's fantastic. You're back. Hooray. 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 Yeah. So let me start. Let me um, start again. Let me start again. Welcome to Tea with the Druid number 44. And it's wonderful that you've made your way to this circle. Uh, I recognize from people who are checking in and saying hello. Many of you have been here before. If you're new to this place, welcome. And you'll soon get the hang of it. I talk for about 10 minutes or so. And you pitch in with your thoughts and ideas. And, uh, and you can do that even after the recording is over. Uh, so if it triggers ideas for you that you want to mull over and type in later, please do, because I look at, at them again afterwards, and other people do too as well. And, um, and then after about 10 minutes, we have a meditation together. And hopefully the 10 minutes beforehand sets you up for the meditation. So here we are on a Monday evening. It's uh, the spring in the Southern Hemisphere, and it's the autumn in the Northern Hemisphere. And this is such a special and magical time. I wanted to explore it some more with you. Last week, we looked at Wabi Sabi and Kintsugi and looked at the, the, the way autumn works with fragility, that are associated with ideas of fragility. And now I wanted to look in a slightly different way at it, in a related way, slightly different way, which is this. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, this is a time of promise, a time when you're sowing seeds, when there's more light, there's more energy, projects are getting set in motion uh, as you look forward to the year moving into its cycle of spring, summer and autumn. And then you come around to the autumn, which is where we are in the Northern Hemisphere. And this is the, the place or the time of fulfillment. It's the time of harvest. So the promise of the seeds you sowed in the spring, I uh, yield their harvest in the autumn. So this we know. So promise and fulfillment. And it happens in our human sphere with our projects and aspirations. And it's happening out there in the world of nature, in the land itself. But... Uh, Here's something interesting. Just when we receive the harvest, just when our promises are fulfilled, we start to experience loss. There's a huge mystery here, I think, in this. We move, we're just now uh, a few weeks away from Samhain. Uh, that time of the ancestors, that time where we uh, honor the process of death and of letting go. And just when we receive the bounty of the harvest, quite soon afterwards, the scouring winds of late autumn and winter come along. Now, is this some kind of cruel joke of the gods that uh, they put in your hands a great gift and then suddenly they introduce this other aspect of life? Or is there some deeper meaning? I believe, of course, that there's a really deep meaning in that. There's a strange way in which letting go, um, being stripped bare, if you like, is also related to the gratitude and the experience of being filled, of being blessed. It's the relationship, ultimately, I guess, with the plenum and the void. Uh, fullness and emptiness, which are in dialectical relationship with each other. You can't have full fullness if you don't have emptiness. 
You can't have emptiness if you can't also have fullness. What a, what a strange and extraordinary thing that is then, that uh, just at the moment we are full, we're also going into the process of emptying ourselves. And of course, once you know this, you can work with it. And I think this is the value, the practical value of spiritual traditions, of, of spiritual wisdom, if you like, is and the practical value of a druidic or nature spirituality understanding is we can recognize this. And rather than fighting against it, we can just completely open to it and accept it. And I, I, I came to thinking about this by looking at the roses in uh, our garden. Um, ah, Mike Cassie is saying that he had log login again appearing. How very strange. Yes, I was getting that too. How odd that you were getting it at your end as well. Must be some Facebook thing. I guess if you think about it, probably thousands thousands of people are using this sort of system at the same time and every so often something goes wrong with it um so yes so these are the thoughts that uh have been playing in my head having had come back from this beautiful retreat uh and uh having sat with a group of fellow travelers on the spiritual path exploring uh these mysteries and so here's a, a meditation that I want to do with you that uh, I think you'll like, and I think hopefully you'll find it easy and that it'll hold your attention, even if you're used to your mind wandering. And uh, I can see we have some Kiwis. I can see looking at the messages now, we've got people down under who are in their experience of spring at the moment. So um, yes, this, this form of meditation, which comes out of sophrology, um, we work with the two hemispheres of the brain, but we work with natural imagery as well and see how you go with it. And um, we're going to work with the image of a rose. I was looking at the roses in our garden because we're getting their autumn flowering, these very delicate roses that are coming out, which are just beautiful. So try this. Uh, just being seated here in your grove you might imagine a grove or a garden whatever place you feel really comfortable in and safe and good in so just being aware of the earth beneath your feet allowing all your tensions just to drop into the earth and instead tuning in to the stability and the strength of the earth its healing power And now move your attention to the sky and breathe in the vitalizing, invigorating, healing energy of the sky, of the air. Breathe it into your being and allow that energy of the sky to meet the energy of the earth within the center of your being. Around you, you might sense a garden on the trees of your sacred grove. Whatever feels right for you. Maybe if autumn trees are meaningful for you, you can imagine wonderful trees in the, in the autumn with their yellow and golden leaves. But now I want you just to move your awareness to your body. Become aware of your body now. Ah. Oh. It's saying logged. Oh, it's doing it again. It's saying log in, stay on page. Can you tell me now if you can see and hear me? Because I'm just going to continue. If you can see and hear me, then I'll just ignore these things. My, my screen <clears throat> has gone completely gray. And it's uh, asking me questions. Please say whether uh, you can uh, hear, hear and see me at this moment.
please say if you can hear or see me at this moment because I'm getting these uh, messages that keep coming up on my screen and I, I've seen somebody else has got them as well. So uh, Facebook isn't working properly at the moment. It says this page is asking you to confirm that you want to leave. Data you have entered may not be sta saved. Are you, are you still hearing me? Can you, can you hear and see me? Just, just tell me that. Yes, says Mandy Parton. Uh, loss is an important part of life, says Jane. Yes, and have you lost me at the moment? That's what I want to know. Have you lost me? Uh, so just tell me if you've lost me or if I'm still here. I can't tell. If, it's like I'm in this limbo in this other world where I can't tell whether I'm with you or not. Um, so I'm going to type in a comment. I, I'm just, oh. Can you hear me? Can't please keep doing these videos. Got you. Looking forward to Tony Jones says, somebody, somebody say whether you can hear and see me. Uh, never retreat, Philip. Always move forward. Bring on Sawin. Hello. There's obviously a, a delay in this process. Um, yeah. But we must pause and find what's happening. We miss her. Yeah. I can't tell. Um, so listen. Um, I'm sorry about this. Yes, we can see and hear you. Okay, I'm going to ignore these comments. Fantastic. We can see and hear you in Cork. Okay, that's fine. Good. Um, you could see me the last time as well. Great. I'm just going to ignore the fact that I, I can't see the screen properly and these silly things keep flashing out. Okay, here we go. Here's the meditation. In fact, you can just go straight into it now. You can even keep your eyes open, but just close them, you know, uh, when you want to. Squeeze your toes and feet together. Squeeze and then let go, squeeze toes, release. Squeeze your uh, calf muscles, release. Squeeze your thigh muscles, release. Squeeze your pelvic floor, release. Squeeze your tummy, release. Squeeze your chest, and you can do that by just pushing your shoulders back like that, ah, and release. Scrunch your fists up, release. Squeeze your lower arms, release. Squeeze your upper arms, release. Squeeze your neck, make a funny face with your neck. Nobody, you can see me and I'll make a fool of myself, but nobody can see you. Uh, like that. Now close your eyes and squeeze all the muscles in your face. Close your eyes and squeeze all the muscles in your face. Now, you're, now release, release those muscles and imagine you're looking out of just your left eye, just your left eye. And there you can see a rose bush with buds. It's the springtime and you can just see buds on the rose bush. See it as clearly as you can. Don't force it. If you don't see things clearly, that's OK. Just imagine that you can see that, see it clearly. Now move your attention, allow that to dissolve and move your attention to your right eye, the other eye. And imagine that you can see a rose bush with hips on it. It's the autumn and there are rose hips on the bush. The flowers have gone. Allow that to dissolve. And now see if you can go back to your left eye, conjure up the image again of the rose bush with the buds. Keep it, conjure up the image with the right eye of the rose bush with the rose hips. And now bring those two together in the center of your vision with an image of the rose bush in flower at the height of summer.
Breathe in the perfume of the rose. And then slowly open your eyes. And now just write down, uh, just write in how, how, you felt, how you feel after doing that exercise. Just a word or two to say how you feel. And uh, this exercise is something that you can do just, you notice it just took a few minutes. You can do it when you're waiting in a train station or uh, you've just got a few moments to spare. And uh, usually it will bring you into an altered state. It uh, may even um, may even shift you from your normal brainwave state of beta into alpha. Um, it's uh, a way of relaxing. It's a way of developing your hemispheres your, and your vision, and it calms you. And uh, it's like a, like a little bit of a brain gym exercise. Um, and you can do this with I've chosen I've chosen the rose because of course we've been talking about the season and I was looking at um, roses this morning and and uh, it connects us to the idea of spring and autumn and in this case summer as well um, and uh, but you can actually do it with all sorts of things and it's fun to actually think up other things you can do for instance you can imagine a white horse that you're looking at in your left visual field, a black horse in the right visual field, and then they merge as a gray horse in the center. So, so I, as Alain Giroux says, yes, I do experience a good deal of lag. Um, Melissa says, don't leave. Um, so, so, here, here we go. Here's an exercise for you to do. When we hear the word meditation, we tend to think of it as one thing. And people will say, uh, I need to learn how to meditate, or I should meditate more, or I want to find uh, you know, the path of meditation. And we forget, perhaps, that there are many different ways to meditate, from little short ways like this to um, much uh, uh, longer and more more uh, different kinds of ways of meditation. So I'm going to finish now because whilst you're, I'm receiving messages saying you can hear and see me, it's actually very strange for me. Uh, and uh, there's this strange lag as well. Um, and what perhaps I'd invite you to, to think on is of this relationship between uh, loss and harvest. And for me, when I hold these, these ideas, when I become aware that I'm living through moments of harvest, this time of, of autumn with its beauty and, of course, its harvest from the fields and uh, from the land, and also at a time of kind of stripping away as well as we enter the dark half of the year, the emotion, when I get beyond a certain melancholy that this time brings, and a certain kind of nostalgia and uh, also appreciation of the beauty, so a kind of poignant, aesthetic kind of experience, I get, if I go to my heart, I get a great feeling of love, actually, and of gratitude. Gratitude for being alive, gratitude for all those who've gone before me, gratitude for the ancestors, gratitude for their gifts and for the earth's gifts and for the gifts of spirit too. So, um, and gratitude to you for, for being here as well in this circle, us all together. Next week, I'm going to be away. So Steve Hounsom will be back by popular demand. He'll be giving a session on um, divination stones. So, uh, you can expect Steve next, next Monday evening, and I'll see you in two weeks' time. So many, many blessings, and uh, see you in uh, two weeks' time. And, and do say, if you have a chance, 
do tell me how you got on with this little simple exercise of the rose buds, the rose hips, and then merging them together to see the rose in, in flower. Okay, many blessings and goodbye. And now I can't leave you. Yes.